Hey guys, how are you doing? Thomas Alex Norman here. In this video, you're going to be learning exactly how you can make your shots cinematic. It's not going to be super complicated. This is going to be a really like basics video 101 on how you can go from having like pretty amateur shots um, that you're just not very happy with, especially when comparing them to one of the cinematic videos you've seen, and how you can actually transform those into shots that look exactly how you want them to. You have more control over those shots. And also within each one, you get that kind of cinematic feel that you think is missing from your shots right now. So let's crack into it. The first thing that you've got to think about is what you're actually shooting. This is super obvious, but you literally need to have it in mind. So many people don't think about this enough. What are you actually filming? And rather than just thinking about what am I filming, we're gonna go a little bit more specific and think about the moment. Think about what you're capturing in what I call moments. This is best explained in an example. If you have two friends and maybe they're sitting in a cafe, right? And they're drinking a coffee. You've got to think about what are you actually gonna film? What, what do you want to capture in this moment? Is it the fact that your friend's drinking a coffee? Is it like specifically the coffee you want to capture? Or is it the actual vibe? Like, what are you gonna remember? What do you wanna take with you when you go home? And it's not the fact that they're literally drinking a coffee. It's the fact that they're in this nice cafe, having a nice time, in a good mood, a good atmosphere, a good vibe. It's the details. Like, that's what you wanna capture. So think about that in your moment. You've really gotta keep that in mind. So that might transform from a quite a kind of a, a boring or amateur looking shot of literally somebody going like this to a much more dynamic shot where you have much more information in that shot. Maybe it's over the shoulder of your one friend, capturing the face of your other friend whilst they're drinking, and you've chosen that moment to capture them smiling as well. And maybe that lined up with the fact that there's a cafe in the background, it's a nice looking cafe, then you have so much rich information in that shot that's gonna capture that whole scene rather than just like the action of drinking a coffee, if that makes sense. So always be thinking about what is the moment that I'm capturing right now? And that's gonna give you a nice bank of awesome footage that is just gonna be a pleasure to edit when you get it on the computer. Okay, tip number two, and these are in order of importance, by the way. Obviously, what you're filming is the most important thing, what you have in mind when you're capturing that moment. Number two is your composition of your shot. This involves how you actually frame everything within the shot. So going back to that example of two friends drinking a cup of coffee, you can, you can compose this shot in so many different ways. And there are certain rules you need to stick to, at least if you're starting out, that are definitely going to inform how your shot looks. And there are gonna be certain rules that really dictate like how people are watching your shot and how actually they look at each thing in your shot and how aesthetic that is to them. Because if you disobey these rules, sometimes you can think it looks good, but when you look it back, it's just something off, something missing. But if you stick to these rules, then it's always something that's gonna to appeal to your audience. Now, I'm not gonna state these here because I've been through them in quite a few of my other videos, actually. Um, so I'm not gonna explain any, but really quickly, something like rule of thirds, leading lines, like those are the things you need to research and pay attention to. Not only within those rules, within composition, you also need to think about how the elements align in your shot, for example. So like, if you have these two friends in this cafe, right? Having a shot over the shoulder of one friend and having the cafe in the background with your main friend kind of in the middle in the focus, that's gonna give a lot of information. But the amount of shoulder in the foreground, the amount of cafe in the background, the amount of focus that's on their face, that's gonna make a huge difference. And that literally looks like from going like this to this can make all the difference in terms of how you're positioned. So you need to get pretty detailed in how you're actually seeing things. Those are general things to keep in mind when composing a shot. The other thing that we're gonna get onto now is how your camera moves. So in the movement of your camera, especially for cinematic movement, you may hear the example or the advice a lot of the time to just move your camera rather than move the direction of your camera. So going, for example, left to right with your camera or forwards and backwards with your camera to kind of emulate those dollies and jibs they have in Hollywood. Um, the problem with this is that if you just keep this in mind the whole time and you're always just going left to right or you're always just going right to left or forwards and backwards, you're not actually making it specific for your shot. And so what we want to think about here is using your movement to emphasize the moment. So movement emphasizing the moment this is super important. So for example, in this example, we've got a friend talking to a friend with the cafe in the background, right? So what we can do 
is maybe actually apply the left to right to this example. So we've got the shoulder of the friend here, then we move the camera from left to right to reveal the other friend's face, and then continue going to reveal the cafe behind them. That way you're getting everything nicely composed in the shot, whilst also adding a nice bit of movement. Another way you can do this is by using uh, a little bit of camera shake. So if we put it on a tripod, if we have the camera completely fixed, it kind of sometimes looks a bit observational. It doesn't actually seem like we're there in that video. But if you add a little bit of natural camera shake, just let the kind of camera almost shake for you if you're doing it handheld. If you do it like that, then it's gonna make the viewer feel like they're there. So everyone's heads move slightly. No one's head is exactly fixed in one spot. And especially if you're kind of excited moving around, you're gonna be naturally moving a little bit and the shot's gonna reflect that whilst you're doing that. All right guys, thank you very, very much for watching that video. It was the cinematics like 101, really basic stuff of how to build your shots from the beginning so they actually look really good. They give that nice aesthetic appeal and they also, as I was saying, like support your video, support actually what your video is about rather than just paying attention to kind of random rules and stuff like that. Um, please feel free to subscribe if you're not part of the family already. Uh, like this video, leave a comment and also feel free to download my list of gear. It's in the link in the description. That will give you like straight to your inbox the entire list of gear that I use for my filmmaking. It's actually a lot cheaper than you might think, especially if you're just getting started. All right, guys, with that said, keep filming. Bye-bye.